What's up everybody? This is your host Afzal and you're watching channel Code X. In the last video, we have seen how to create your subdomain, how to register for hosting plan, how to set up a database and connect it with PHP and create a simple API. Today, we are going to have a look on creating a complete REST API with all the CRUD operations. So make sure to watch complete video. We're gonna start right after this intro. I will highly recommend you if you haven't seen the part one of this video, make sure to check that out because there you will see the foundation, how we created the PHP file, how we are connecting and all sort of basic setup is there. So in the last video, we left on the point where we have this employees.php as a URL and we wanted to convert it to just employees. And for that, we have to define set of rules which we are going to perform at the same directory where our employees.php is there. So we are going to create .ht access file. Now this is a special kind of file which has all the setup and rules and regulations. So let's go ahead and quickly edit this file. I'm not going to get into detail of everything, but let me just tell you that here we turn on the rewrite engine and whenever you come to employee directory, it will jump to employee PHP. And whenever you pass parameter after employees, it will convert it as an ID parameter and pass to employees.php. It's just like a simple uh, remapping or restructuring your folder. So it looks proper in the form of URL. Now we're just going to call employees and we have the same response. Let's verify that on Postman as well. Perfect. We have the same response with a perfect rest URL. Time to celebrate again. All right, now we are going to perform the other operations like read, single, create, delete and update. So for that, we have to implement different cases. As of now, we just have implemented the get case. Now we are going to duplicate it and write a couple of other cases. So let's continue with the post method. Generally, we use get to fetch the record, post to insert data, put to update existing data and delete of course is to delete the record from database. And similar to what we have done in get employees, here also we are going to create a method insert employee and we'll perform the operation. But the point here, you're inserting something in database. So you should have that information that we are going to fetch from file get contents. Now this is inbuilt method of PHP. You don't have to worry about that. Whatever we are getting from file get contents, we are converting to JSON and storing in the data object. Now using the data, I'm going to fetch the name, email, profile pic, and this data is going to come from client side in the form of JSON. Now it's a good idea if you want to implement a validation here that you want to check whether all the properties are there, whether it's not null, you can perform that. But just for demo, I'm going to proceed with whatever data we have received. I'm going to assume that it's a correct data. All right, so here I created a method and uh, I just uh, added the same signature that first we are receiving name, then email and then profile picture. So let's continue and create a global connection. This time we are not going to make mistake. In the last video, if you remember, uh, we were not referencing the global connection and we got runtime exception 500. So it's, it's going to be very simple uh, structure again here. We will write an insert query and insert query is a little bit tricky in the terms where you define the value. Just have a look on this query. I'm writing insert into employees. And we are going to provide value for name, email, profile picture. So pay extra attention where I'm defining single code to make it a string, double code to concate data and the PHP dots where it actually acts like a plus and concate your variable in the string. Just a quick tip, if you want to insert integer or double, then you don't need to provide the single code. You can directly write the data. You can learn more about these SQL queries to perform insert, update, delete all the operation on W3Schools. I will put link in the description where you can read more about it. But for our demo, we are good. This simple statement is enough for us. We are not going to perform any joins or anything. So let's go ahead and execute this SQL query. And the way we execute, we use the connection and perform the query operation, which is inbuilt method inside PHP. 
So unlike get request, we are not going to fetch number of records. We are just going to check whether this query was successful or not. If it is successful, then we are going to provide this header, which is 201 created. If it is not, then we'll just say 400 bad request. And optionally, you can also provide some response data back. Uh, so if you want to inform that the record is updated successfully or inserted successfully, you can wrap that data in the form of JSON and pass it back as a response. So same thing I have done here as well. I've just created a response array with a status one and a status message as employee added successfully and for the failure case, we are going to make a status zero and employee addition fail. Just a simple message for the user. But even if you just give, uh, you know, like 201 created, it makes enough sense that my record is inserted. Of course, for failure case, we need to specify something more like why it got failed. If you, if you want to, you know, help the user to understand the issue. All right, let's go ahead and save this file and we are going to test the post method. For that, I have already created a request inside Postman. You can find this collection on the link below. And there's a simple JSON data which I'm going to pass to this post request. And we should have third record inserted when I execute this. So let's go ahead and click on send button. Again, we have some issue to fix prior to get the success result. Okay, so this is giving us 500 internal server error, which means there's something wrong in our code. Again, we have to look for our code, whatever we have written inside post. And here you can see that I have written table name as employee instead of employees. So once we make the changes and save the file, we are going to execute this uh, API again. And here we get 201 created. And here's the response as well. So let's go ahead and test that we should have third record. And here we have third employee with the name Muhammad Afzal Ali. Perfect. Now we are done with the get request and create request. Now let's move on and try to implement updation method. For that, we'll just duplicate the case of post and it is going to be quite similar to the post request, but there is a minor difference. Let's see what is that. So I'm going to rename this case as put and change the method, which we are going to create uh, uh, just in a moment. This method, let's say that it only gives you the functionality to modify your name. You cannot change your email, you cannot change your profile picture, which doesn't make any sense. But say that your business only deals with name. Okay, so important thing here is you want to update record, but which record you want, like you have three employees, which employee you want to update. So that information you have to pass in your get URL. Right. So whatever ID you pass in the URL and then whatever payload you specify in the body is going to be updated. So let's go ahead and create one more method which accepts ID and name parameter. ID will be used to refer the employee and name. We are going to update the existing name. So here again, I just uh, copied the existing method because it's quite similar to inserting a record. Okay, and it will accept two parameters, ID and name. That matches our signature with the update employee method. Now here we have to change the query, of course, uh, it, it will be update employees, set name to the new name. So the query goes like this. Now make sure you don't make any mistake uh, in providing the value because the single quote, double quote and dot sometimes makes confusion. And also we have to define the condition which employee to modify. So for that we will write where ID equal to provided ID. And here we go. Perfect. So that's all we need for update employee method. Uh, we are going to keep the response same. We are going to execute the query, but we don't need this 201 created state uh, because that's a special kind of a status when a new record is inserted. So here we'll just keep it uh, 200 status and we'll give some response back that your employee update uh, updated successfully or updation failed, something like that. Let's go ahead and save this file and we are going to test a post uh, put method now. For that, we have update already created in the collection link in the description if you want to check yourself 
Okay, so we already have three records. I'm going to modify the third one and change the name from Mohammed to MOHD. That's the short form we use uh, back in India. Okay, and once it is updated, let's refresh and here we have the updated name. Perfect. So, so far we have covered three operation, fetch, create, and update now we'll look into delete operation so let's go ahead back to our php file and we are going to implement the delete case now this delete case is quite similar to the get case but we have a parameter in the get url so i'm just going to copy paste the get case and uh, rename it as delete case and also we need id parameter from the url so that we can delete a particular record not just a random record right so now we know which record to delete we'll create a delete employees and actually it should be employee not employees right because we are deleting one single employee so let's go ahead and duplicate a method as well so whatever we have written in the update employee i'm just going to copy paste uh, that same thing and rename it as delete employee and here again we are going to have only single parameter which is id we don't need name or any other thing and let's update the sql query so it should be delete from employees and here we'll just define what is the condition which employee you want to delete there's nothing set and no values nothing right so this is our query we are going to uh, execute the query and now once it is successful we have a status code 204 now 204 means no content your request is successful we have deleted the record but i don't have any response to give you back like there's nothing uh, from my side to update you just it was successful and be happy okay but in the failure case of course i will give you the deletion reason that it was a bad request or whatever so let's go ahead and save this file and test whether deletion is working or not and i'm going to delete again the third record which we recently created and updated and also the body payload doesn't make any sense here so whatever you have written doesn't make any difference because it's not going to read the body parameter so we'll provide the id3 and hit the delete request and successfully this time we got 204 no content means it was executed and there's nothing to respond back and here we have the third record deleted amazing so we have performed all the crud operation with read write delete update everything so now we'll see how we can fetch a single data a single employee say for example i have hundreds of employee how i can pass just id of one employee and get that data now at this point if you run single employee right it will give you list of all employees because it is going to execute the get method and on get condition we don't have uh, you know any logic so whenever a get request comes it is going to give the complete data so let's go ahead inside our php and write a simple logic over here that if there's an id parameter then execute another method and if there's no id parameter execute the same get employees method so let's go ahead and try to implement that i am going to fetch the id from the get request okay and first before doing that we have to make a check if there's an id parameter available or not these are inbuilt php methods so you don't have to worry about this and no need to import anything this works out of the box so what i'm doing over here is just checking whether there's an id parameter if it's not empty like there is id parameter available in the request then we'll employ uh, we will execute the above a case otherwise it will execute the get employees which is our previous case now let's proceed and copy the get employees method we will change couple of things like uh, first of all we'll rename it as get employee which will accept id parameter and also our query will change so instead of getting everything from employees we will put a where condition uh, we want a specific record with id equal to the provided id perfect now also we don't uh, want to loop through the elements because now we are getting only one single record so we can simply say fetch a sock like we can call this method 
and whatever we get is going to be the final output of this uh, method so let's go ahead and delete all of these and finally we will echo the row the implementation is quite simple but it's very useful when you want to fetch just one record you don't have to fetch a list and then filter out on the client side you can do it uh, in the api so let's go ahead and test this out i'm going to fire the postman here i have list of all the records one and two and then i'm going to say read single and provide the id one so now you will notice that here i'm just returning one object it's not an array of object and let's test a couple of scenarios everything works with list item and uh, the single item also works fine perfect so now we have seen how you can fetch data with this url and you can do the same thing on a chrome browser as well but the problem here is anybody who's having this link can execute this request and get the details of employee Now to improve our API and add some security, we are going to use authorization header. Now inside PHP, you can get all the headers in that request by calling get all headers. So instead of performing that operation inside employee.php, we will make it in a common file, just like we did with connection.php. So let's go ahead in the root directory of our API, which is this folder and create a new file. I will name it auth.php because this authorization module we can use in different files for employee for users just like we did with connection and we will create a simple class here i will name it auth object and then it is going to authenticate the request which is coming to the server so in general you can pass any header you want uh, say for example the app version the language user is using or any sort of parameter but what we are doing here is we are making sure that there is an authorization header available and authorization is of type bearer so there are different type of authorization so it is not taking username password and other type of authorization it is bearer token and we are going to fetch that token which starts on the index 7 until end of the string and we will compare with some predefined token now this token you can keep in database you can keep somewhere else if you want but just for demo sake i'm going to keep this in the same file uh, so this token can be anything like you want to put your name you want to put the uh, some key phrase you can do anything but generally it's a combination of username and password encrypted in base 64 so let's say that this string is our token and we are going to compare with the user request so if someone is passing you hello and you are also having the token hello which matches together then you are going to say this request is authorized which in our case is the token. So anybody who's calling the API should have exact same token in the form of bearer. Then only we will allow him to execute. All right, before we move uh, further, we have to modify one rule inside STXs because PHP for some security reason, they don't allow authorization in the PHP file. So we have to bypass that and say, any authorization is coming, just pass me that information and I will treat it uh, properly, okay? So let's go to employee.php. This is going to be interesting part here. Uh, I'm going to include the auth.php file, which we just created. And we are going to create the object. Similar way we did with uh, connection and we created a database object. I'm going to create auth object. And using this auth object, we will perform authentication. And once we authenticate, we will come to know whether this is authorized or not to execute the code further. All right, so let's go ahead and put a simple if condition here. I'm just going to check if it is not authorized, then just give uh, some server error. In this case, I will give a unauthorized request. So you can provide header of type 401 which means not authenticated. Now there are some other headers as well, like 403 unauthorized, and there's so many, uh, you know, HTTP status code to read about if you want to study that. But for this demo, we are not going to get into details of that. You can find so many information on internet. So what we have done here is implemented some simple authentication. And if it is not authorized to uh, pass, then we are giving 401 status code. Let's go ahead and check that on a Google Chrome. Here you see authorization header is missing because in the Google Chrome, we don't have option to pass any headers, which we can pass from Postman. So Postman is also giving the same exception. What you can do from the auth section, you can provide 
some invalid token let's go ahead and say hello or type your name over here and then try to send it will give exception or you can say uh, 401 unauthorized request now if you provide the same exact token which we have in auth.php it will give you the data now it is also a good practice to keep this information in a variable so postman also manages uh, environment and variable so you can just say token over here which i already created a variable inside the environment and then anytime you want to use in any request you can just say uh, curly braces and token you don't have to specify that token again and again right so that's kind of a global variable inside postman so similarly i'm going to check another method and here also we have the same issue if you don't provide authorization header and don't authenticate with the proper bearer token you're going to get the same exception and if you provide the information you're going to get the data back perfect so we have implemented all the crud operation we have seen the single record fetching we have implemented the authorization header so much in this uh, you know action packed tutorial i can say so i hope this tutorial was helpful in some or the other way make sure to give it a like subscribe the channel if you're new here and Leave the feedback in the comment section what you liked in this video, what should be improved so that we can take care in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.